Hello everyone, this is Afsar Ali and welcome back. So this is the continuation of uh, APM architecture. In the last video, we saw uh, the architecture of Android, how it works. And in this video, we're gonna cover about iOS, XQI test framework, how internally it works and everything would see in action. Okay, so let's get started. So if we see for iOS packages, we do have uh, a lot of dependency. Uh, such as APM iOS driver, APM Xcode, APM UI Auto, APM uh, Instruments, uh, APM iOS Log, iOS Simulator, Authorized iOS, Node uh, Simulator, uh, uh, this is for Simulator, uh, SimCTL, and APM Cookies, APM Remote Debugger. So these are the packages available for iOS, all right? And, and if we go to or the APM directory and go to the node module. You can see all the dependency available as we saw already for Android. Uh, similarly, you can see uh, the dependency for iOS as well. Uh, you can see APM IDB, uh, then we can see uh, APM iOS device and iOS driver, iOS simulator. All right, this is Mac driver for you know Mac applications. And uh, you can see, uh, yeah, so these are APM Xcode, APM XQI test driver. So this is the most important uh, package that we'll be using. So basically, it's a, uh, you can say uh, Apple framework that is uh, the mainly it's being used for uh, you know automating uh, the appli uh, Apple application with an Apple native applications, like Swift or Objective C, etc. So if you see here also, there is uh, something called WebDriver Agent, all right? So we saw already ADB. So similar to that, we do have WebDriver Agent. So within WebDriver Agent, we do have a lot of other things as well, all right? Uh, you can just see WebDriver Agent Runner. So this, this is the one that will run uh, in, in your device. The, the server will be, run, uh, will be running there. And uh, basically, it will drive uh, you know uh, the automation of your application under test. So internally, it uses Carthage and uh, some Apple script, and uh, you can see the Bootstrap dot uh, ss. So some shell script is there, okay? And yeah, in the build, how it uh, build happens, uh, code signing thing. Uh, is there so code signing and all we'll see uh, in a later videos how uh, iOS code signing happen with a mobile provisioning profile etc all right so this is the bootstrap uh, dot sh so yeah so this is the something some script will run in the root directory all right so yeah we are not going in detail of those and you can see the library some utilities are there all right and also you can see for xcode so xcode also has a library that is being used okay so this is a js a javascript file that uh, that uses apm support uh, etc all right and it it has some internal function is being written that will communicate with the xcode and web driver agent and it will install everything right so we'll, we'll see uh, in detail all right uh, how things works etc so if you go to this apm idb uh, section uh, in this uh, dependency this is similar to adb for android right uh, that will be used for you know uh, installing uninstalling app etc so similar to that we do have idb which will perform similar task here as well for ios right you can see uh, within the tools section you can uh, see a lot of uh, uh, commands available you can see app commands so what it will do it will list apps uh, install apps uh, uh, something like that, uh, like launch app, etc. So this is all thing is being done by this uh, IDB command, right? 
and you can see other things as well interaction commands such as press button type text etc press key code so these are coming from idb all right so xc test commands are there so yeah so these uh, are we will see in, in uh, later when we'll uh, actually we'll start uh, you know uh, writing our test for ios then we'll see and we can understand more about that all right so let's uh, get started and uh, let's get to know uh, each of the uh, dependency a little more uh, about each of them all right for ios uh, the architecture is uh, like similar to android till here uh, like json wire protocol uh, first the http request will be sent from the language binding uh, using rest api to the apm server and that will uh, you know the first the best driver will convert everything into json wire protocol uh, all the request uh, that is coming from your uh, client libraries, uh, be it uh, Java, be it C Sharp, Python, JavaScript uh, language binding, it will convert everything to JSON wire protocol, and that JSON wire protocol will then go to the best driver. Then best driver will decide like which, based on the capability that we set here, uh, it will uh, check and it will assign and uh, initialize the driver appropriately based on the capability that we have so if we have ios then it will definitely go and uh, you know in, instantiate the ios um, driver or xqi test uh, drivers all right so then uh, apm server send request to xqi test then xqi test we do have a ui automator bootstrap.js and yeah so then that will install web driver agent and then it will do a couple of things uh, within the uh, device itself then it will try to install application under test uh, within this uh, uh, ios device or maybe ipad or maybe tv os etc then it will uh, give us the response back to the apm server all right if I see uh, the APM, uh, the hierarchy, how it works, uh, this is first the HTTP request comes, then base driver will convert everything to JSON wire protocol, then base driver also will decide which uh, driver need to be in, uh, initialized. Then suppose if it's iOS, then it will go to XQI test driver, then XQI test uh, driver will initialize uh, and it will, check if the uh, device, real device, whether it's a real device, UDID, based on the UDID, uh, if we have, UDID is the unique uh, device identifier, if we have provided in the desired capability, uh, then it will run on, uh, or it will select that particular real device, right? If we, we haven't provided any uh, UDID or we, if there is no device already present in in the list or you know, that is connected to your machine then uh, what it will do it will uh, go and create a simulator uh, ios simulator in, in in your machine and that will work all right then after simulator is being created then it will install the idb services all right idb services then that idb as i said the idb is similar to the adb uh, that will install uninstall app etc on onto the uh, real device or the simulator all right then uh, once idb is set uh, then there is something called a devcon factory that will request a connection for the device on local port 8100 so this is uh, the port where uh, idb services will will work all right then after that web driver agent so this is a, a main server that will be installed in your uh, uh, in your device in your ios uh, real device or uh, ios simulator right so this is uh, the main uh, thing that will uh, you know drive our automation test so if we uh, go and check a little bit about the web driver agent you can see here here you can see uh, APM web driver agent dependency within this APM directory. 
and within that you can see a lot of things are there the Carthage uh, is there that need to be installed as well and uh, also there are uh, other scripts available uh, that will uh, you know install something and basically this is a web driver agent dot x code project so basically it's a separate project itself it will create one uh, uh, ipo or uh, app file right for ios there are two type of file that is ipa and there is another thing called app right app file or app file dot app file that will only work in in simulators right that is virtual devices but ipa file that will install in your real, real devices right so yeah to create ipa file you need to have a valid credential valid certificate and valid uh, provision profiles right so those things we'll discuss later like how pro provision profile works and how uh, certificate works to communicate with the real devices etc so yeah this is the web driver agent and uh, this is a separate project uh, that will uh, create a, a app file that will be installed in your uh, ios simulator or ios real devices all right so coming to this and after web driver agent is up and running in your device then uh, when a http request will be sent from your client and it it uh, you know go through the web driver agent then uh, actually it's uh, running on uh, 8100 all right uh, the server and it will be proxy right? so web driver proxy uh, through the proxy it will try to communicate uh, with with your device or with your uh, application under test so th this is a sample request for uh, take the screenshot right so this is how it works localhost 8100 this is uh, the, the default port that uh, our bootstrap is running on right or you can say this is uh, the proxy port available and based on that port uh, your session will be rerouted to uh, your devices all right so if we see uh, everything in action uh, we can just create a sample uh, app and we'll install in our simulator and we'll see how things work. So this is my simulator and this is my APM desktop. I'm using 1.15.1. This is the version that I'm using. So you can see the port number is 4723. It's a default port for APM. And in advance also, you can see a lot of other things. Web driver agent port is in 8100 for this is for ios all right and for android we use uh, bootstrap port that is 4724 and for ios web driver agent port that i was talking about here right 8100 so this is the web driver agent port so you will see when, once i run a server and once i try to install our app then you will see a web driver agent app will be installed first right let's see uh, let's uh, start and so i do have already one app and desired capabilities already i set for I, this particular simulator and let me run it and you will see all the logs over here okay so then also we can see this here a uh, web driver agent will be installed and then we'll analyze uh, the details about what all the things yeah you can see a web driver agent installed first then after that app our app got installed all right so let's see this uh, uh, the step by step how this thing works all right so if i go here you can see the first thing is the http request that i showed this is the one then after that it will go to the base driver and the base driver uh, will create a session yeah before that it will create uh, your http request into json or protocol 
right? The JSON OR protocol. Once that is being converted, then it will go to the base driver and base driver will create uh, your session based on the uh, desired capability, whatever you have sent. Then after that, uh, based on the uh, you know uh, desired capability, it will create a iOS XQI test uh, server. All right, or uh, it will instantiate XUI test driver. So you can see it will first check uh, your current user, HDK version, then it will try to construct a simulator here. And then once the simulator is done, you can see uh, starting log capture IO simulator. Then uh, you can see uh, setting up the simulator. So if I go down here, event app install logged so one event is logged with the app install and this is the path of the app the daily news dot app that i'm using and that is uh, being installed in the simulator once that is being installed uh, you can see here wda path so this is web driver agent path apm web driver agent as we saw here this is uh, the APM web driver agent path. So that will install in your app. So if I minimize this, you can see this is the web driver agent uh, that will be installed in, in your device. So once that is being installed and that will be listening on port number 8100, or you can change also in, uh, in, in your APM, okay? Uh, you can change this port number as well. So devcon factory then requesting connection uh, with the session that is being created by best driver to local port 8100. Then from here, a proxy uh, will work, right? WD proxy will work. Then, uh, yeah, th this is the one, then web driver agent initialization happened. And if you go to here, XQI test uh, send some some of the request for XC test runner. All right. So this is the internal thing. Then we do have WD proxy. So this is the WD proxy where you can see all the requests now coming from local host 8100 status. You can see. Uh, this is all for status and you can see log capture or something like that. Here, here you can see uh, WD hub session of uh, the session name, then a screenshot. So this is also uh, going with, uh, you know, proxy. You'll, if you'll see, this is coming from local host 4723 because the, our default port of APM is 4723, but once it go to the device, it go through the proxy, all right? So using proxy of 8100, and we can see that here. So the same screenshot now becomes localhost 8100 session, the sensor name, then a screenshot, right? So this is how uh, the whole thing works, and that will give us the response, and that, that response will be shown or uh, return to the client all right so so this is how this whole thing works and let's understand uh, each of each of the modules uh, one by one all right so what is the apm ios driver does internally uh, what all things it does so it can also run standalone so if you want to automate your application uh, with the iOS, so standalone without using APM also, you can automate with APM iOS driver, right? If you use standalone server, this is the server, then you can also automate. And supported strategies uh, are name, by.name, by.xpath, ID, iOS, UI automation, class name, accessibility ID. So these are the locator strategy that is being supported by apm ios driver and you can see there is no css selector or something because that is only for web all right so this is uh, name 
XPath ID, iOS automation, class name, accessibility ID, and I think uh, there is one more uh, class chain or something like that. So we'll see those uh, uh, locator uh, strategy, etc., in the later videos. And uh, it, it also can start a simulator or a real device. If UDID is given, then it will uh, uh, start a specific uh, simulator or a specific real device. Run for each type a huge set of instructions. First, remove the instrument socket. Then it set the bundle ID from app. So every app has a bundle ID similar to package uh, name we do have in uh, iOS, we do have bundle ID. So basically it's a package name, all right? So it will set the bundle ID from, and it will get the bundle ID from the app and it will set the bundle ID, then create instruments. So instrument means uh, to testable. So to make it uh, testable and run uh, simulator reset, isolate simulator device, set locale or run a real device reset, etc. if it is a real device then set preferences or run real device reset. Then start log capture, then pre-launch simulator. So then there is uh, something called pre-launch simulator, then start instruments, on instruments launch, configure bootstrap, set bundle ID, set initial uh, orientation, uh, init auto web view, or wait for app launch. So these are a lot of things working behind the scene that we don't know we can't see in in the uh, you know uh, here also in the apm console but this all thing internally works and all instruction are uh, helper method within the driver.js within that we do have a driver.js where all the instructions are present all right so then contains a more specific sets of capability constraint has logic to build and run safari launcher using apm xcode as well so if you want to communicate with a, a safari browser that also can be done and uh, uh, for that we'll be using xcode apm xcode uh, you can see here there's apm xcode so that is being used in for for that purpose and implements command for ios driver selenium commands are compiled to ui automator commands all right and commands will be sent out to ui auto client apm ui auto and connect to apm remote debugger so this is all work of apm ios driver similar to apm xcode so what X, apm xcode uh, does it, it runs a cell command to return useful data from xcode like get path get version get automation trace uh, template path get maximum ios sdk has an auto retry build so these are the uh, function that is uh, uh, being done through apm xcode then apm ui auto so what it does a uh, wrapper for the ui automation framework talk to it via socket connection so there is a socket connection uh, in between your device and and the server all right runs a command queue that get filled up by the send command function handles responses as a buffer from the ui automation framework uses uh, OSA script to rotate the screen sort, all right? And provides method to bootstrap or simulator or real devices, all right? Then JavaScript files which are run in iOS UI automation context, not node, all right? So it, it, it uh, also set the JavaScript files which are run on the iOS UI automation context, okay? responsible to execute actual ios ui automation commands then command flow like web driver command then ios driver command then ui auto command so internally this thing works apm instrument so wrapper to run instrument commands a lot of ex execute uh, calls to talk to instruments binary all of them take callback to propagate the results 
uses IWD instruments without a delay package, which has to be compiled first. Special instrument package that gets rid of delay between the commands, and it also contains uh, older version of IWD instrument, version 4 to version 7. All right. Then what uh, APM iOS log does? APM iOS log capture the console performance and crash log from the iOS simulator or real devices. So yeah, it basically uh, capture all the logs from the uh, real devices or the uh, simulator and then it return back to uh, the APM server. By either calling tell to grab uh, logs from a system path simulator device or by calling device console, that is for the real device, performance logs are getting grabbed using the remote debugger. Crash logs remain in dot crash file on the system. All right. APM iOS simulator. So as we know, the simulator is a virtual uh, device that is present in your machine similar to this this is a simulator so to drive the simulator we use apm ios simulator it wraps around the ios simulator app starts and shut down kill all simulators updating settings and locales and update or clean safari grabs metadata about the simulator device uses simulator to sim ctl to talk to the simulator so basically SimCTL is used to communicate with the simulator uh, and, and the uh, APM server. Works for Xcode 6 and 7 and above. And node SimCTL, uh, so wrapper around uh, Sim simulator CTL uh, or maybe I can say simulator controller, right, binary. CLI utility to control an iOS simulator execute as a sub command to xc run local and locate or invoke developer tool from the command line contains function to install or remove apps launch and shut down simulator create or erase or delete devices get list of devices so these are the things that will perform by node simulator controller and APM remote debugger, RPC client to connect APM to iOS web views, can connect to WebKit dev tool for iOS only. This one is for iOS only. Has two RPC client process, a remote debugger RPC client uses TCP6 that connect to local host. So this is a port, All right? So WebKit RPC client uses a WebSocket to connect to local host. Uh, you can say uh, this is uh, a web socket. WS is a web socket, localhost this, and dev tool page and page ID. So this is internally works um, with the, whether, whether it's a web socket connection, whether it's a TCP connection, all right? So yeah, we, we, we have already covered all of the package in details, uh, what all the function it does and what is the main uh, action it, uh, it does when we, in, uh, when we run our APM test, whether it's uh, iOS or Android, we cover almost uh, all uh, our packages or the library that is, uh, or third party library that is being used in APM. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe and please share as well. And yeah, for bye for now. And uh, let's see you in the next next video.